it's Ashley and I'm back with another reaction video and this time we're going to be reacting to Cuevo's studio and this is what is the uncanny valley um I did a reaction to one of their videos a while back I will leave um with leave it up here if you want to go and see it it's called it's called the Kardashian effect and it was basically saying um, how the uh, Kardashians have affected the uh, standards of beauty and how um, they made photoshopping more acceptable even though people you can tell most of the time when people photoshop if they don't do like the normal things that you would take account for like texture pimples and things like that uh their channel i had a bunch of their videos saved but unfortunately their page was hacked um they made a backup page and then they finally got their page back and all of their videos are still here thank goodness and I'll probably react to some of the ones that I had saved eventually but I was like what's the uncanny valley and I was like let me save it and I can react to it just to say welcome back I'm happy that you guys got your channel back if you're um, they're back so go and check out their videos in 1919 Sigmund Freud's essay the Uncanny established the idea of binary opposites, alive versus dead, strange versus familiar. The uncanny is located at the mid- The biggest benefit of VA loans is that you can buy a home without a down payment. That's huge because other loans can require 3.5% or 5% or more. point of these binary opposites, where we cannot differentiate between the two anymore. Understanding what makes something uncanny is actually a very significant and ongoing field of research in psychology that dates back to the early 1900s. For something to be uncanny, its presence, be it visual appearance or auditory sounds, has to produce an unsettling feeling. Creepy things can also produce unsettling feelings. But that's a different field of research, where studies have shown that men and women experience creepiness in different ways. There are actually different types of creepiness as identified by Teen and Polonetsky 2015, such as examples of social listening where you're being watched through your webcam, to being visited by unknown entities. For instance, McAndrew and Koenke 2016 found that unusual patterns of nonverbal behavior can be seen as creepy. Women tend to find this creepier than, say, clowns or aliens, which men find creepier. However, the uncanny effect is something both men and women find equally unsettling, a very primal fear that stems from a very modern unknown. Human or so I think I know where this video is headed, so let me prepare myself. Boys and more recently robots. Also, it's worth differentiating between creepy and eerie, as Hu and McDormand found in 2010, eeriness is more closely associated with the uncanny. Things that are immortal, such as online avatars or to some extent robots, don't immediately trigger your fight or flight response, but they do make your brain hover over the switch. Hu et al. 2018 summarized that creepiness applies to a broader range of scenarios, whereas eeriness applies to the cognitive response to a creepy situation. Black Mirror gets this concept really well, and mm -hmm. plays on the uncanny to make for exciting TV. The show's depiction of cutting-edge technology invokes unforeseen, often never-ending consequences for the cast. The feeling of- It's funny since I mentioned Black Mirror in the uh, horror movies episode. ...of uncanny is often formed from unknown humanoid or human mimicking shapes Art and video. experiences. This is important for robotics That's because robot. if we ever want to live in an iRobot universe with 2004 Will Smith, our robots need to become more realistic and less of this. This somewhat human, somewhat robot humanoid leads back to a unique psychological phenomenon called the Uncanny Valley, where Japanese robotics pioneer Masahiro Mori 
propose that we human entities creep us out much more than obvious machines and robots. No one is afraid of Elon's Tesla factory robots because they're very obviously machines. But for some strange reason, the further away they are from human likeness, the less sentience we attribute to them. The sole existence is to serve a functional purpose, whether it be attaching the A pillar of a car or giving it a fresh paint job. Their appearance doesn't matter because Elon invested all of the skill points into function and not aesthetic. But what if you come across something that's 50-50, both function and appearance? What is its purpose then? That ambiguity is part of this valley, where the creepiness factor goes up because after all, fear stems from the unknown. Mm. Human prosthetics throws a wrench into our understanding of this valley. The most cutting edge prosthetics are near indistinguishable from the real legs. thing at a distance, but we still find them uncanny. The startling coldness of a prosthetic hand is enough. for us to lose our human-like affinity just, with I the thought product, he just had knee socks on. but it also gives us a vital knowledge on differentiating human from machine. This is an important point because these uncanny faces do not provide that information. In fact, their whole point is to hide it and blend human and machine together. What this uncanny valley is really suggesting is that things that are, say, 80% in resembling a human are often the creepiest and designing robots that can go past these technical limitations is the million dollar question in robotics. One big giveaway that something isn't perfectly human is the influence of movement. In movies, zombies have deliberately stiff, rigid movements. And we're so talking we about zombies. No mistake that they're not human. Like what? As no matter how realistic the prosthetic hand looks, when the digits begin to move, our feelings of unease amplify. Conversely, when we see a healthy person move, we can confirm that they're human. An entire robot simply magnifies this feeling of unease. Is he better in United? <laughs> or Polish Choice? <laughs> what commercial are we gonna get? Ooh, another one. Modsy. The focus was on making more realistic robotic faces because the theory. I used to follow the robot on Twitter before I shut my Twitter down because I was like, I'm not on here, I don't need it. And then when Black my Black Lives Matter uh, and protests start popping off, I caved and remade my channel and remade a YouTube channel. YouTube, <laughs> Twitter was that we can go past the uncanny valley and it's simply a technical limitation over time more realistic faces would no, make us feel not more realistic at, ease. at all but that's definitely not the case robots with more actuated facial muscles were seen as far creepier than your household Roomba and so with the turn of the century the design focus changed rather than try trying to reach the second peak here designers now try to reach the first peak because the second is technically limited. In Masahiro's essay, he gives the example of a wooden prosthetic hand. The color of the wood is deliberately left with its smooth, fingerprintless shape. There's no confusion that it's a prosthetic, which makes us feel more at ease. It's why prosthetics are shaped like this, with the focus on functionality rather than this. Now, I'd like to clarify that uncanny does doesn't necessarily just have to be caused 
by a robot, a bad Photoshop job, or a minor yeah. <laughs> a misposition detail, or even works of art can elicit the same feelings of unease as a queer ambiguity. It just happens to be that robots are the most prominent oh, get it, little and in-depth example to look at in this modern-day context. No. For instance, Instance, Mitchell et al. 2011 found that a mismatch in spoken voice increases the eeriness for both humans and robots, something that you wouldn't be able to test for in photoshopped images or surrealist art. In 2004, the Polar Express was jokingly regarded oh man, as that the greatest are so unintentional scary. horror movie of its time. <laughs> It's he near said like it. animation and realistic quality fell deeply into mm. this uncanny valley as live action motion capture was used to mimic lifelike movement onto clearly CGI characters. But compare that to James Cameron's Avatar. Had it not been yeah. for motion capture there, the film's success would have been far more limited. It seems that we fear the uncanny when there's a risk of human likeness. This leads to what's known as the atypical feature hypothesis, where the level of eeriness of something is related to the human likeness of it, and the presence of one or more atypical features. For that instance, in McDormand and Ishiguro's research, a black dot in the middle of a robot's head creates greater unease than the same robot without it. We tend to interpret it as a negative deformity, such as a bullet hole, tumor, or third eye. For a more human example, having very large eyes on a small face. <laughs> Scientists theorize that we've developed this cautionary mechanism to assess genetic fitness on faces, where anything away from the coinophilic average is considered uncanny. As Burley et al.'s paper states it, if the atypical feature is representative of possible infection, we experience disgust. If it were of physical threat, we experience fear, and if it were of poor mate quality, we experience negative attraction. These feelings of fear, disgust, and disliking are the precursors to eeriness, which comes from the feeling of uncanny. The second mechanism of how we fear the uncanny is called the category conflict hypothesis, where we cannot differentiate between man and machine, dead or alive, which we have already covered both of which are reminders of one's own mortality. So, to summarize, the more something looks like what you expect it to look like, prototypicality, the less we fear it. We find things the most uncanny when they look nothing like what we expect them to look like, but they also seem realistic yeah. and somewhat human-like, such as human or... Yeah, that's true. When people do that, just in general, not just with robots, but like serial killers who are like attractive and people. Not expecting it, so. Or they're bit of them being charismatic. You know what? I'm, this is the stretch. Let me shut up. Both <laughs> shapes, alien faces, and obviously. It's a stretch. The robot, automatonophobia. Ah. The photography of Jeremy O'Sullivan is a good example of this. While undoubtedly the images are of people, our brains cannot comprehend the composite images, adding that element of ambiguity to set us on edge. Likewise, what's more uncanny than a whack? Museum. They look 95% like the real deal, but there are subtle differences that subconsciously yeah. indicate that they're not. Part of it it's is to do with their posture. Like wax. Video game designers understand this, and so characters often have idle animations to add realism. Also, makeup makes a huge difference in adding realism, or rather blurring the lines between real and that fake. Looks Photoshop. Photographer Andrew is that Lustin a wax doll? took this photo of Sandra Bullock's wax model oh, okay. after applying rouge and lipstick. A lack of pause results in an uncanny feeling as it's unnatural, something I've covered yeah. previously on Instagram vs. Reality. By adding makeup, we're used to seeing faces without pores, so it doesn't trigger a feeling of eeriness. Another giveaway with wax models are the eyes. You feel as if they're following you because they're very clearly glass. Real eyes have 
very visible red capillaries across the sclera, with fine microstructures in the iris, such as the collarette. Not to mention not the eyes. eye should appear to <laughs> visibly glisten because it's wet. On a wax model, these will be very expensive, fine details that simply wouldn't make sense from a financial standpoint, instead making them fall into the uncanny valley that's part of the Madame Tussauds appeal. As any artist can tell you, without these elements, you cannot achieve a hyper-realistic copy. So that brings us to an end of of another video, but this topic of the uncanny is a much larger subset of what it means to be creepy, or more so look creepy, which is a topic for a later video. If you would like to learn more about your own face, you can order a facial aesthetics report at our website coves.com. As always, visit our Instagram page at Coves Studio for more facial morphs Coos. and I other composites. what I say, Quavos. <laughs> Coves. Coos. Coos Studio. Not what I said. Do I want to drink? Not really. But, uh, you know, I can't pronounce things. <laughs> so this video was really interesting. Yeah, this video was really interesting because I didn't, I didn't study psychology. So I didn't know, um, I've like heard people mention the Uncanny Valley. Have I? Let me not lie. Mm, no, I don't think I've ever heard about it. Um, so this video was really interesting explaining that feeling that you get because it's it is unsettling when you see things that you know are not what you know they're supposed to be. Um, and um, this was a really good explanation of the different ways and um different ways and p explanations of how it can be applied to different forms of parts of our daily life like Instagram like you know like right off the bat when something's unsettling like people were pretty unsettled with Khloe Kardashian when she posted that photo I'll put it up here and they're like that's who is that supposed to be that's that's not what Khloe looks like so it was unsettling um and they've done that a lot where they post stuff like well they're they're always the main culprits with stuff like that but then there's there are regular people that post on Instagram who Photoshop like influencers or um, other people and you're like that just seems off what is it and sometimes you can't put your finger on it and then sometimes you're like you just look at it and you can tell right away um, but check out uh, their channel <laughs> Check out their channel and, um, Oofs, Oofs, Coofs channel. <laughs> Anyways, leave your comments of your experiences with having this feeling. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. If you want me to get close to you just tell me what to do tell me what to do if you want me to take over just give me the green light just give me the green light